So we're going to be putting up a temporary cold frame over the raspberry canes. And what I'm going to use, I bought some cattle panels last uh, last weekend. I've just got them standing up here in the garden. They are eventually going to be um, more or less where you see them now. They are going to be used as a uh, trellis support, um, some arches to uh, grow all my melons, um, all my vining plants. But I don't need that until well, getting into May. So for now, I'm going to take and I'm going to plant or uh, move it and put it over top of the raspberry canes. I had actually the three panels, they're 52 inches wide each, 16 feet long. Um, three panels actually works out exactly to the length of the, this bed. So I'm going to put up the three panels and uh, uh, cover them with plastic. My goal is to kind of warm this area up a little bit faster so that we're going to speed up the production of raspberries. More or less advance the season by uh, at least two or three weeks if all goes well. And that uh, structure is going to come off, uh, you know, maybe mid-May or so. And I'm going to move it back and uh, use it for the vines that I'll be planting out later in May. Um, but uh, hopefully, because these are ever-bearing raspberries, so first, the first crop will be a little sooner, which is always great. We're always waiting uh, for fresh fruit and vegetables from the garden. But also later in the season, uh, as you get into the fall and September and early October, uh, the ever-bearing raspberries are at their peak and they produce tons of, of raspberries at that point. Um, but our season here is a little on the short side for them. So they're at their peak when the fall frost comes. And some years I get lots, some years not as much. But I'm hoping if I kind of bring it ahead a couple of months uh, that, or sorry, a few weeks, that um, I'll actually get a bigger crop come the fall. So, as I mentioned, I've got three panels. Um, they're already more or less arched over, not exactly to the shape, but more or less. So I'll be carrying these over and I'm going to be placing it over this bed here. There's going to be four stakes along each side pounded in and that's what I'm going to anchor the bottom of the cattle panels to. Uh, a lot of times you'll see people using doing the same method um, and they'll actually use things like the t-bar posts and that's fine but I don't really need it supported that high. I'm not building a, a structure for winter snow load or anything like that. I just need to keep it from keep it in place, keep it from blowing away. To get started, we'll put these stakes in, uh, one at each end and at the 52 inch intervals down each side. So now we need to join them together. So I'm using just Simple cable ties and put them around both together and keep them even. So I've gone over the one and down below the other and around the two. So we're just going to go around and tie these in a few different places and just using the zip ties, cable ties. You should always have some strapping around the home and uh, that comes in slightly different sizes, different spacings, different materials, different finishes. Um, it doesn't really matter for this purpose. This is galvanized so it's not going to rust so it's a good choice for this. It also matches the galvanized uh, um, steel on the cattle panel. So I want to just put that through and I'm going to put a screw through to hold it. I can see that I need one, two, three of the large holes per section. I'm just going to take a pair of tin snips and I'm going to cut after that. So I need one, two, three.
and I'm just going to take them and I've just folded it over put it around here and I think I'm going to actually put it just above because I want to hold it from siding up the panels that is and take in here There we go. So I'm going to do that all the way around the corners to anchor it down. So I have the basic arch structure up now. Uh, pretty simple. I've put uh, four stakes down each side. Uh, one at each end and two at each of the one at each of the two joints. Uh, then I've attached using my strapping and a screw attached the, the cattle panel to each of the posts. If I was doing a more permanent structure, I'd probably do uh, two or three of those little clips on each post. Uh, I'd also maybe use a sturdier post, but uh, and then I've gone along and at the joins, I've put some cable ties to hold them together. Again, a few cable ties. And that's giving me a nice even space all the way, even the sides um, all the way down. Uh, and it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to do work on the ends. Now I want to take those and I'm going to mark the heights I want to cut them at. Um, That's good for you, good enough. This is not a very permanent structure. It's not a permanent structure and the um, there is some movement, right? So let's brace it a little bit, but it's really the plastic's going to come around the end and get anchored to these on both sides. Again, around an anchor and over the top and it's going to anchor to the header. So I'll grab another 2 by 4 and then I'm going to figure out roughly where this is going to go. So I'm going to bring it down like that. So I've got my boards cut. I'm just going to anchor them. I'm going to use the same little pieces of strapping and a screw. A couple of these. And I'm just going to use that to anchor them at the top for now. back put some more screws in that later. I've also cut a piece of wood for the bottom that's going to support everything going across. It's going to anchor into the posts at the side. And I'll anchor screws into both of those as well. Murphy's here helping us by lying on the plastic. I'm not sure what that's going to accomplish but we are going to uh, I've got my uh, sister Heather and my brother-in-law Gail here helping. We're going to just pull this plastic over. So we'll get the end here. And we're just going to pull it up. If I want an extra maybe two feet here, I'm going to take and put soil on the edge all the way down. Yes, that's right, Murphy. I'm going to put soil on the edge all the way down. And uh, that's going to anchor it along the side. That weight of that soil will also help keep everything from blowing away. And then I'm going to take some one by twos and I'm going to roll that up and anchor it to these and I'll show you that a little bit later. Make a channel. Put 
soil all the way down both sides just like that fill that in and that's easy for us to uh, take away in the later in the spring when we want to move the uh, structure we just have to lift that soil shovel it out of the way and lift everything up but it adds weight all the way around the exterior to help hold this down uh, so the wind can't take it away we're going to finish off this end again this is a very temporary structure it's only going to be up for two months at the most so I'm not doing anything really fancy on it I framed it in quickly and I'm going to uh, pull the plastic in around and then I'm going to hang a sheet over the end uh, we could do a fancier door in this particular case I don't need it um, but uh, you know it depends all on your situation so I want to pull it in tight at the corner and I'm going to cut down on roughly a 45 degree angle down in I'm going to find my other corner of the doorway here again roughly from the corner roughly on a 45 degree angle cut there so now I want to cut it a little bit shorter here got to leave enough plastic to roll up I'm going to pleat the plastic here at the top. A few different pleats. This takes up the, the curve of the top. So I've got several pleats. So that's where my board wants to be. Now I'm going to roll it down. As I hold the plastic, quite a bit of plastic in here, but that's fine. I got it held in place. If you had a second person, this would be easier. So I have the plastic rolled um, so it can't easily pull plus you've got the screws holding this strip of wood against the frame and that sandwiches the plastic again it keeps it all from unraveling center it more or less hanging straight oh. pull that plastic down and as I roll the piece of wood up I'm tucking the plastic in most of the way and we'll come back down so there we have it uh, 
I was done in uh, just a few hours today, uh, mostly by myself. I had a little bit of plastic, help putting the plastic on, although I could have done it by myself. It was a calm day. Um, but this is a temporary structure, uh, just four cattle, or sorry, three cattle panels, uh, 52 inches wide each one. So I've got 156 inches long. Um, and it's about, uh, I think it's about five feet uh, wide. It's not very wide. Um, but it's the, the size of the area I had. If I had made it any wider, of course, it would have ended up being shorter. Um, but I was just making this fit to my particular scenario. Uh, you'll see I have the ends, just a simple piece of plastic hanging over that I can roll up. Uh, I'm probably going to do something a little better just to hold it uh, better at the side, seal it up. You can see I put the soil to anchor it down along the edge. Um, the total weight of all that soil along the whole side would be several hundred pounds. Similar thing at this other side, a roll-up panel that I uh, can use um, open during the day to get ventilation all the way through. Down the other side. And the same thing at the bottom. So there you go a quick little cattle panel cold frame.